Ready? Yeah. Hey, ready. everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel. And tonight we're going to be answering all your questions about stained glass. And we had a little oops thing At happen. about five minutes to seven. So we're going to... We're going to have to wait for people to find us and I'm going to have to, you know, so keep we'll my kinda, fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit before we start answering some questions that came in, uh, you know, during the week from some, some, some subscribers and some not subscribers that we hope will subscribe to our channel. So while you have a minute and if you're just tuning in and you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to the RDRV channel. Also, remember, thumbs up because the thumb is the favorite finger for us. Um, so yeah, so we hope everyone is well this week. Um, I know a lot of kids are returning to school and, uh, we have a lot of concerns, but I hope your family is well and, um, your community is doing good with, um, everything that else that's going on. Around uh, the country. And yeah. Around everything. the country with the weather and all. Um, I hope everyone is safe. Yeah. I want to say hi to our friends, especially Gary down in, and, uh, everybody down in Houston because, oh, yes. you know, uh, you know, Gary and Melanie, you guys just batting down the hatches. <laughs> I know you're on a hill, but everybody around you probably going to get a lot of water tonight. Thanks, so Jeff. just be careful. It's good to see you. And uh, just a little hello there from Barb and Ed to Gary and his wife down in Houston. I hope you guys stay well tonight. Hi, everyone. Everyone's starting to find us yet. And um, yeah, we messed up. Yeah, we messed up. I don't know what happened. I hit a, hit the wrong button. That's okay. That's what all those buttons are for. Now we know what that one's for. It's to start yeah. early, but we don't need to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we had some really good questions come in during the week, and I just want to. I'm going to take the time, and we're gonna. I'm going to answer one of them. Okay. I and, just want to say hello to uh, Jean from Kentucky, Brenda from North Carolina, Joe from Australia. Um, Hey so guys. far, those are the people that have checked in. Yeah, Thank you good so to much. See you. Good so, to see uh, you. Our, our first question was, what, and uh, and I think, I know we have a video on this, and I believe it's called Frame It, but they wanted to know what kind of wood that we use, because we're always talking about framing our windows for our customers. Well, I, I have a piece of it right here. I'm going to show you the profile of it so you can see it. Now, there's a 3 8 rabbit all the way down the center of the wood, three-eighths of an inch deep. And it's also three-eighths of an inch wide on three-quarter thickness wood. So when you miter this, give it a 45, connect another piece to it. This wood is unfinished, but it is so smooth, you will never get a splinter out of it. So your customer or you can finish this wood and it's available at your stained glass supplier. It's also will be available. There'll be a link on our website. Okay. And it's available through Amazon, but you only, you know, you know and it's pretty expensive. It's not cheap. Do you get four 36 inch pieces of this oak? This is white oak, th four 36 inch pieces for about $50. So it's not cheap. But when I fabricate frames for my customers, you know, they're, um, we charge by the lineal foot, and that includes our labor to cut it, glue it, and screw it. Yeah. So in your area, you'll have to figure out, you know, what you want to charge. And we know what we charge per lineal foot, and it seems to work out pretty good for us. We're not breaking down the doors at the bank, but we are making money. So, and that's uh, what it's all about. Yeah. And one thing to keep in mind, uh, when you're pricing your job price, I mean, this gives it a nice quality, finished uh, look, man. finished it's look, awesome. very professional. And that edit, that extra cost, of course, gets passed on to the customer. So when you think about it, if you're, if you're charging the customer a hundred dollars more for the product, you're making, you, you should be making dollars. another at least profit $50. Right. So it's not always about, oh, that's too expensive because you're going to make the, more money with more expensive The more material. your product costs, the, the more, more money, money you that make. you make. If Think you're pricing that. your if, you're, if you're yeah. pricing your work to make a profit. If you're pricing, yeah, if you're just not, you know, in it to uh, Swiss Family Robinson, the whole thing, you know, just hang out. 
which there's nothing wrong with that. No, you can do that too. <laughs> if you can hey, do that. Joey. I uh, just had, hey, a, Joey. I had a note right here to say, thank you, Joey. Your nippers are on the way, my friend. <laughs> so I don't know if you, I, I, I don't think that you have them yet no, but because I couldn't Wednesday. put them in the mail until Saturday, I think. Yeah. So I think Wednesday yeah. you should probably get them. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I hope good. you like them because we love them here. We, um, do. we love, we love those nippers in the glass studio. So, Hey, that's enough on that wood, but your supplier has it. And most, a lot of times you can get it in six foot lengths, but it's going to run you about four or five dollars a foot. Okay. Plus shipping. So uh, a lot of times you're better off to get those little 36 inch pieces. If you're doing a window that is 32 inches square or smaller. Yeah. You'll have to figure that. Because remember you got a mite, you've got a, you've got a miter that. So you're losing, you're losing about three and a half inches. Okay. So keep that in mind, but this is the product that we use and it is available through your stained glass suppliers, it's available through Delphi, it's available through Sunshine, it's available through all the major suppliers too. So. We, we did have a supplier locally, and you may have one, you may have a, a local lumber uh, supply house that will cut this wood for you uh, just like this. Right. Um, but, but, but you'll uh, find it's not going to be finished like no. this. You're going to have to finish it. Yeah. So this being a finished product, okay, it's worth it. Is worth every bit of the four dollars and fifty eight cents a, a lineal foot that you're paying. Because I think we were paying three dollars uh, lineal, lineal foot, foot for and it wasn't flooring. finished, yeah. and it was not uh, perfect. Perfect. This is. Perfect. We used to have to fight to line the miters yeah. up because mm. the wood, mm. the wood was just a little bit thinner or thicker because it was it was actually re, uh, repurposed old flooring. It was beautiful. Sometimes it would be oh, beautiful. Oh. Sometimes it would be all, you know, kind yeah. of long. So you felt bad. You never, you didn't, yeah. You never got. Uh, you never knew. But um, you never got four we pieces this, that were identical. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so that's a good question, and I hope that that helps you. And we do have a video that shows you how we actually fabricate our frames. And there's a product on there that... Uh, it's a video called Let's Frame It. Let's oh, frame yeah, it. and the yeah. product. And yeah. the product on there is, a, is a, 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 a framing square that holds corners together. And you, you buy a pair of them for about $44. And every time you make a frame, you're going to kiss yourself because you're going to love it. Yeah, it's so... Perfect, yeah, it's, perfect. It's, yeah. it's just know, a little touch of professional. Uh, yeah, just spend forty dollars, and man, you got a tool that's absolutely and wonderful. And if you have a wood shop, you can make your own frame. Yeah, if you have a wood shop, you can make your own vice that does miters. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. Okay, that's awesome. So, we have any more questions there, Barb? Do y'all have any questions? We can get back to these other questions. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them. Linda from Maryland hey, is here. How are you? Nice Hi, to see Linda. you. Nice to see you. Yeah. So just put your questions in the comments. Um, one question you ha they had is what kind of solder do you use? Um, and we've answered that question before, but if you just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, who we'll just kind of, again, some of these questions come from people that are just new to the channel and are trying us out and we thank you we welcome you to our channel and we welcome you to ask questions right because that's what we're here for we're here to help you get to the bottom of your questions to help you move forward within this beautiful process that we call making glass so anyway the the solders that i, I like to use two kinds not mix them up, but only two kinds when one is not available from the other. So my first pick is always a little more expensive, but it's Canfield solder. And I use 50-50. Canfield solder, 50-50, absolutely no trash, no nothing in it. And it's beautiful solder. My other choice is Victory White Metals. Uh, you'll notice it. It may be at your supplier under... Uh, VWM or but Victory White Metals is another solder that I use that's available. It's only about $18 a pound as where Canfield's like 19 a pound. So you know what? If you're buying 
25 or 30 pounds and you can save 25 or $30. I prefer to go with the victory white metal. Yeah. Okay. Because it's significant. If you only buy one pound and you want to save a dollar, that would be up to you. Okay. But if you're buying a lot of solder and you can save a dollar per pound, adds it, up. that ad, it adds up pretty quick. So anyway, our choice our studio choice is Canfield mm -hmm. and Victory White Metals. And we'll also have a link on that on our website to get you over to Amazon uh, where the prices for the Canfield are $18.95 a pound and the Victory White Metals are $17.95 a pound. Now, is that, that's a pretty good price. I that's mean, a really good price because I'm paying $18 a pound plus shipping. And I also noticed that on the website, on the uh, uh, Amazon, they had a five pound special. I, they didn't Ooh. show the price, but a five pound special. Y'all, let me tell I'll you put something. Those links up. They'll be up in the morning. Yeah. So the the five pound special. I mean, for this the live oak them. project. You know, we're using twenty five pounds of solder on this project. So when you think about it, hey, if you can get a five pound deal, go for it. You know, so it's on there as well. Um, Patsy wanted to know who do you mostly use as a glass supplier? First, well, first we uh, go to Sunshine. Yeah. And uh, Sunshine Glass Works, their distributor. For just, yeah, for like uh, small stuff, not unusual stuff, but stuff we use for repairs mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Sunshine Glass. And only because, you know, we have a rapport with with uh, Scott and Sean uh, for over 30 years. And so, you know, when we call, they know who we are. Uh, we've been a customer for a long time. And we find that when we send them samples of glass to match for us, that they They're actually, really, really good. they really are good but with it. Now, also Mount Airy. Well, Palmetto Mirror I mean, and Art Pal Glass. Palmetto Mirror and Art Glass. Yeah. Why did I say Mount Airy? Because that's what it used to be. Oh, okay. Palmetto Mirror, Mirror and, and Art Glass. Glass in Greer, South Carolina. Uh, if you're in South Carolina, that's a great place. Yeah, to because it's it's pickup only. Um, but for unusual glasses, glasses that are no longer made, there's, um, I would venture to say thousands of square feet, Barb. Yeah. 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 Nine square feet at a time, thousands yeah. of square feet, nine square feet at a time. Awesome place to shop. And also we do uh, shop on Amazon because we get free shipping and that can make a big difference. Yeah, your shipping pricing. can eat you up. We don't have a local supplier anywhere in the state. So we accept Palmetto, which is in Greer, South Carolina, that Greer, I know South of. Carolina. I mean, there and, may be small little shops. You know, shops. bless her heart, Alan and Jill have been friends for almost 40 years now. And we we've watched each other's businesses grow and and carry on. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, for specialty glasses, uh, pick up only. Take a trip, Greer, South Carolina, Palmetto Mirror and Art Glass Company. They are on the internet. Check them out and give Alan and Jill a call. Set up an appointment. Um, question from Brenda: Do you use fifty fifty solder solder for everything or only lead cane? I use 50-50 for everything. The 50-50 is, is more flexible because it's got the same amount of tin as it does lead rather than 60-40 being 60-10, 40 lead. It's more rigid. Okay. And that's fine. I think, I think it's fine to use either one or mix mm -hmm. them up. But uh, I just prefer in my studio, it's like it's like all the different glasses. Not mix that, them up in a project, not mix them. No, up. not mix them in a project, but I don't mix them Use up in those. my studio, in right. my space. We don't do that much small uh, sun catcher type thing. So the sun catchers that we do, we use 50-50. 50-50 and we're good. Yeah. Just makes it easier. Now, if we're restoring a copper foil piece, we, we will use the six. Because, well, you can usually do like a temperature check mm -hmm. and it'll tell you what solder is on that copper foil piece. Your 60, right. 40 is going to be a little bit hotter. 
it's going to take a little bit more heat to mount it just a little bit so you know you got to think about that and then um i don't know i hope i hope y'all caught the video that we produced last wednesday night at eight o'clock i hope y'all check that out yeah we'll have a new one this wednesday uh we're starting the glue chip pro process so, so we're excited chipping. about that <laughs> chapter one is coming up wednesday night glue chipping chapter one so you can add a, a whole new look to your glass for very little money most of you have a compressor that you fill North up your Carolina. bicycle tires with or whatever however Right now, I mean, that's well, we'll have a list of tools that you'll need to do some sandblasting and all of that very, information. Very few tools. Yeah, it's very few tools. And it's cheap. really it's cheap. Um, other than having a compressor, I'm going to say borrow uh, one. I'm going to say thirty dollars get you out the door and you're sandblasting on glass, including yes. the glue. Yeah. And that's another thing. Glue. That's another thing. If you guys are not sandblasting uh some of your glass in your in your uh pieces you're right. missing you're missing a, an, an entire design element for mm -hmm. your windows so I, i'm excited about this to show you guys how you can do sandblasting very inexpensively and, and on plus a budget. make yeah, glue chip gosh. on a budget yeah and and be able to make to be able to make glue chip y'all and they make it on a production thing where they sandblast it spray it with the glue, dry the glue. And when it comes out the other end, the glue has already chipped and they stick it in a crate. And I don't know if y'all have ever seen, but they have double glue chip, which is glue chip on both sides. Yeah. And oh, by the way, good luck on cutting that. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. And it's a process, but you know. Yeah. That was a question I had. I had to ask Ed, what can you, do you cut the glass before you glue chip it or can you cut it after it's glue chipped? And the answer is you, you cut, cut it, it after, after it's glue chip because you're only glue chipping one side, y'all. The other side's still smooth. And if you need the glue chip out on your pattern or up, just flip your pattern over. It's no different than cutting a textured glass. You just moved from uh, working a textured glass to... I don't, and I don't, not sure if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. You can see the glue chip because of the light coming behind it. See it? So you get that little bit, that glue chip. This is exactly what we're going to do in the next video coming up. Part one, again, will be Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Glue chipping part one. So we'll have the glue uh, for uh, on sale, for sale on the website with the directions. So you can right. purchase it. In about it a week. In yeah. a in about a week yeah okay in about a week after the video then we'll uh, have the, the rest of the glue we want to give you all your equipment and uh, we're still waiting for our big 50 pound bag of glue to arrive <laughs> we had to buy it in that size um, to make it affordable for y'all so. yeah so we can package it up for you guys so um yeah uh, i'm not sure where we got that i'll have to go back Joyce wanted to know where we bought it. I, I'd have to go back and check the name of the company we got it from, but uh, we'll have some for uh, for sale on the website with the directions. Yeah. It'll yeah. come with directions. Because y'all are always wanting to know how to support us. Go to our website and go shopping. Oh, let me say we will have that for sale. We, we will, will have that for sale. Have it for sale. In one pound bags. Oh. It'll be in one pound bags, which is a in lot of glue, y'all. Pound bags with directions. Yeah. With directions. And I guess it's on its way. I mean, the big thing. Because the little ones are too expensive. Okay. All right. Yeah, the little one pound yeah, because we, be so because cool. we got the fifty pound bag of it. The the so one make it affordable for you. Yeah, the the one pound things are going to be about about twelve dollars, so to fourteen dollars. But you got to remember, then there's going to be a little bit of shipping involved in there. So yeah, we haven't figured out the pricing yet. That's why we didn't. We, we really yeah, don't we're, know. We'll try we'll to include make the it shipping very and affordable. The price. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, yeah, so we're excited about that. I mean, this yeah. is this video is uh, 
I had not glue chipped the whole process in 20 years. I don't so. know why we haven't thought of it earlier. <laughs> I haven't glue chipped in 25 years. It 20 used years. To, yeah, we used to have so much fun doing well, that. Well, we used to do signage for, for yeah, customers. Yeah, signage you know? is amazing. Okay. I wish I could find some pictures of some of the signage that we've done before. I always wanted to do a Coca-Cola sign with, you know, mirror in the back and then do the glue And that's chip. the other thing. Guess what, y'all? You can glue chip mirror. Oh, that would be fun, right? Okay. But you can't cut mirror from the back side. So mm. you have to glue chip. If you just want like four corners of mirror, you can glue chip four corners. That'd be cool, right? So you don't have to cut it. You know, you don't have to cut it. Okay. So if I wanted to do, ooh, if I wanted to do like Coca-Cola, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I would mat my Coca-Cola. And then I'd glue chip the Everywhere mirror. I'd, I'd cut my mirror to the size. Right. And then I'd the mat thing the that says sister or something. And that sister? Just whatever. Just and mat just it. And then glue chip it. Well, you and have then to sandblast have a, it. And then oh, yeah, you have sandblast. to mat it, okay. glue chip it, and sandblast it. Okay. That's enough of that. I'm getting excited. Too excited. I am too. Okay. And we are going to make, this is, this is red flash glass. I don't know. If, yeah, you can see it. If you hear that squeakiness, that's it's just chair. my chair. I so we're going to do four corners of this for a specific window. And we're just going to cut five flower petals in each corner. And we're going to sandblast around them and we'll glue chip around them so that the petals stay red. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Um, I had a question about... Um, projectors i know i like that one because you know we bought a That's projector his favorite 36 years ago <laughs> and we still have it and we will you know we'll use it every now and then but yes you can produce big work from a small pattern like two inches square with a projector and trace it onto your pattern big big and it's y'all it's better than making copies of everything and trying to stick it together because when you shoot it on the wall all you're doing is enlarging it you're not changing it like you are when you have those patterns and you have to print them out and tape them together totally different way of doing your artwork much easier and a lot more fun i think and really more economical yeah, but you know, people like to use the computer because they can move things around. Well, this is true, Barb, and I understand and, that. But, but you know what? You're computer literate, and I'm computer not illiterate. in that way. I, I do not know digital design oh, or okay. CAD or, or well, and neither do I, but I know so. projector. I speak projector. Okay. Okay. And there are some things, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that I can draw. But there are some things that I, it just a certain specific part of it drive me crazy. Right. And it's so much easier. We've used a projector over the years and we find it to be the quickest way to get our sketch onto a large pattern. And it's now, now if, you, if sorry to no, interrupt, that's okay. but if you're ha <clears throat> I'm not talking about the grid work part of the pattern. That's you, easy. you do that by you. You do that yourself. But I'm talking about the, you know, a bird or a. Um, pictorial design. Yeah, or uh, um, even a logo. If you get the dimensions. Yeah, right. if you get the dimensions right, you the the logo or lettering is easy to do. Okay, mm -hmm. even if you took the time to draw what you want small, and then shoot it on the wall. Draw it small and shoot it on the wall. Okay, so Joey's using a pattern right now with Rapid Resizer. I, you know what? I used that before. Um, I had a hard time learning it, so I, it. I don't have a lot of time to spend to learn. If I can't learn it, you know, pretty quick, I move on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it took. He said it took uh, eight sheets, and it was not easy to get the two copies exactly the same. Right. You won't. You won't ever, Joey. With a you copier, won't ever, you, you won't will ever not. get those lines to line up. You can hang it up. It no. just. You just. You just can't do it. However, if you take that 
small pattern and they make a they have a projector it's about 180 dollars and it's called the tracer it's a small projector we've got one that we we spent 300 dollars on it 30 years ago yeah that was a big expense that was a us. huge expense for us but what we were doing at the time was the very first hooters bar oh yeah remember that we etched inside the bar that. all the way around every state in Australia. And we did. You love it. Australia you love it. Here? And uh, we 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 sandblasted I had to all learn. of the the high the the things on your trip that you would see when you went to Queensland. When you you know when you went to the outback, the things images. you would see, the images, the you know it's it was just awesome. It took us like I don't know three months to sandblast and design and do all the artwork for eight windows that were five foot tall and eight foot long that separated the bar from the rest of the restaurant. Remember that? That was awesome. That was the very first Hooters bar in the nation. Yeah, it was a fun job. And we we got paid very well. We and did. Made, and we worked for uh, Mr. Brooks, who's no longer yeah, alive. And he was such know? a great person. And same way with John. So yeah, they were great one to of work alive. for. Yeah, it was, it was a this was, oh gosh, like I said, it was the very first Hooters bar. And the fun thing about a projector is you can, well, let me just say, once it's in place, do not move it. Just do all your drawing, do not move your projector. Yeah. That's one thing. But you feel like you are really achieving some. I mean, you you really well, you are. Feel you're looking like, at you're looking at a line on the wall on a piece of paper bar. Yeah. But then guess what? Now you have you a have pencil in your hand. Yeah, immediate gratification. You don't have to trace that. This is giving you an outline of what you, and you know what? Believe it or not, y'all, when you start doing this. Have fun with it. Have fun Draw with it. Draw pencil. Draw in pencil. It's not your pattern. What you're making your pattern. Don't trace it word for word, okay? Have fun. And you know what you're also doing now? You're learning the concept of freehand drawing. You can't pay for that, guys. Well, you can, and it's very expensive, okay? It's art school. But learning how to draw from doing tracings on a projector are yeah. priceless, y'all. It's, it's just another way to it, learn. You use it for everything, yeah. uh, all kinds of things, murals. Um, just don't let the kids run by and bump into it. <laughs> yeah, please don't move it. Once Do it you in get your started, studio. don't move it because <laughs> you have to finish. Yeah. Uh, Kayla said she never thought to use a projector. She has one in her closet. I bet you a lot of people have one in their closet. Pull right. that thing out and play. And, and play with it, you know. Magali, how are you this evening? It's good Magali, to see you. Hey, Magali. Yeah. Hey, nice to see you. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a few everyone. little little things, you know, that that we can let you guys in on. And they're, uh, you know, What's a couple that? of weeks ago, we were talking about the the digital programs that are available for stained glass. But um, I feel if you uh, if you try a projector, borrow just borrow somebody's for the evening. OK, turn the lights down stick you some big white paper on the wall and have some fun with Go it. Go for it. We used to borrow ours when we first started our st uh, our store. We used to borrow ours from the library. Yeah. Do you would, remember that? We, we would, would go borrow it, it from the library. Go check it out. So I don't know if they still uh, do that or not, yeah. but they did for... Um, and, the, you know, the overhead projector that we used to have in, in school with the grease pencils, those work too. They work great too. They're very easy to focus as well. Uh, they're a lot more expensive, the overhead projectors. But you know what? Yeah. You can probably find them in an old, like a school surplus store or something. You can probably kind of remember the old copiers where you had to turn them by hand? <laughs> they can not remember <laughs> that. What? How old are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm telling my age. Because I used to be the one that got to go to the office and run the copy. Okay, Magali, we're talking about a projector. If you, if you, I don't know if Magali got on when we were talking about a projector, but uh, just at the tail end of it, yeah, pop up, yeah. Drawing, if you need help with your drawing, a projector is your answer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A small projector. You don't need a big one. 
Yeah. And you surely don't need a movie projector like I was looking at online today. I was like, I typed in projector and I'm looking at all of a sudden, and I realized these things are $2,200. Not the projector you want. The projector you're looking for is about $150 or $200 if you can find a used one. Yeah. And, and you, you may have one in your closet or somebody can loan you one. Okay. Um, I have some more questions. Okay, Barn. Let's go. Okay. Um, what glue can you use for a cracked piece of glass? I'm not sure what kind of glass they were referring to. Well, if you if you're just like you have a piece of glass in a window that's just got a crack in it, again, you don't want to you really don't want to take it out because now you're messing with the integrity of the existing window. You can always take a little uh, just a little syringe they make them little glass syringe or like what I have, uh, you can use uh, clear silicone. Okay. And a toothpick. So you just kind of lift that lead up. Just, I mean, that piece of glass up with the crack, they're going to move. They're going to separate up and down like that. Just a little bit, just kind of lift it up, put some silicone there, push it down, let it sit for about five minutes. When you do that, it's going to set up a little bit. And then you just take your finger and rub it back and forth. And the silicone that's on the glass itself will just beat up and get on your finger and you just throw it away. And But everything in between will, uh, number one, if it's an out outside window, it'll stop the water and the weather. But I'm a big fan, unless there's like a broken crow's foot in it and that piece can fall out, I'm not a big fan of replacing a, just a cracked piece of glass because it does mess with the structural integ integrity of the window itself. So if it's a crow's foot break, fix it or replace it. Mm -hmm. If it's yeah. just a crack, it's an inherent quality that happens over time. Yes. Okay. So, um, and what kind of glue is that? Just clear silicone. Oh, clear silicone. Yeah, okay. and if you're okay. using, like, you know, if you want to glue something together, uh, just clear glass-wise, you can also use an ultraviolet glue, but you need to have an ultraviolet light to make it set. Yeah. Can't have like one without the glue. other. Right. And usually the ultraviolet glue, y'all, is about $35 an ounce, and it has a very short shelf life. Yes. Or you could sit it in a window. If you want to stand there and hold it yeah, until it sets up, until it stops to move. <laughs> stand in the sun. Stand in the sun, <laughs> hold it, and once it stops moving, then set it in the windowsill. This is a good question. What do you use to sign your work, if anything? Well, for years, we've been using a metal tool engraver, a vibrating metal tool engraver. Now, I looked at the one that we have. And it does 7,200 strokes per minute. So in other words, once you get the vibration I'll just put right. I'll on the, on the okay. links too. All right. Uh, the, it's, uh, let's You'll have see. to tell it's me what it is. It's electric metal engraver. Okay. okay. And it, you know what, y'all? It's one of those inexpensive tools that will last you forever. $22. Yeah. We've had ours forever. So We've had know. ours, yeah. I read something interesting today about engraving your piece. And that's funny that they asked that question and I didn't even know that question came up, but um, the old time bevelers used to always put their initials in, in their windows, especially if they did the whole entire window. This is the old time bevelers that would do the whole entire window, bevel it, put it together and everything. They would put their initials in the lower right hand corner. That was the tradition. And they would engrave it. They would engrave it with okay a glass engraver okay. and they stopped well, doing that when they started selling windows out of the catalogs. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you can, uh, you can use this engraver, not just to, so it's not just for glass. You can use it. You can engrave your tools, mm -hmm. handles on your tools, your TV, your TV. You, you can engrave anything. And if somebody decides they want to pick it up and they need it worse than you do, it's engraved. Your initials are on it. Did we ever tell them that tip about the old timers, uh, the glad, what they used to do with their cutter to keep the oil on their cutter? No, we didn't. Why don't you tell them about that? Why don't you tell them? Well, you know, we all, we use, uh, 
glass cutting oil now for our cutters, or or we use you know kerosene and sewing machine oil mixed three and three and one oil mixed together as a lubricant. But um, the the glass cutters, old glass cutters, what they used to do is they would they would just wipe their brow right here and the oil on their skin off their forehead. The oil they kept in their hair. That they kept in the grease, you know, like the oil. Well, when they were, when it was sweaty, they, it would be like it would piling up right in here. So they would just take it and rub this right here. And then they would take their finger and run down the edge of the glass and then they would score it because yeah, they're taking they grease, put, like their Brill Cream baby on the glass. <laughs> or they would take their cutter and put it right there yeah, and then just, cut their glass. Just take it and lubricate it right there in the in the brill cream in their hair, baby. That's true. That's a true story. God, I'm glad I don't wear brill cream. That is a true story. So if you ever run out of cutter oil, yeah. just, you know. Well, you know, for forever, Barb, because you know I'm a fisherman and I like to fish. Mm -hmm. But forever, if you have a two-part fishing pole, if you just take your index finger and rub right here okay. and crease beside okay. your nose... And then you put that, put that on the interior part of your fishing rod, and then slide it together. When you get ready to take it apart, it'll just slide right apart for you. What? I'm okay. not doing anything. I'm getting oil <laughs> off the corner of my nose. It's a natural expulsion, oh. expulsion of uh, natural ingredients. <laughs> just as crazy, right? Just I as know. crazy. Okay. So anyway, that must have been interesting. I'd love to hear stories about old time glass cutters. And glass yeah, workers. or even the glass workers, period. Yes. Because you remember, I'll tell you a story once we get back in the hot shop in the next month or so. I'll okay. tell you some stories from back there. Uh, what is the best glass to cut for just starting out? Like if I wanted to buy a certain type of glass and it was my new project. To learn how to cut on? or you... No, for my first For your project. first project? I would probably stick with um, types of glass, uh, probably cathedrals. I think I would just starting out and and you you're learning how to cut glass and you feel comfortable doing it. So why pick something that's going to get you frustrated, like a goofy glass or a really heavy textured glass? Right. Pick a pretty glass that you like. That isn't any of those things, but is annealed well. So two glasses that are annealed really well in this country are Spectrum. Bradley. I mean, I'm sorry, not Spectrum, are Wismac and Kokomo glass. So just don't get the textured glasses. Don't get the yet. textured glasses yet. Wait till you and if you if you're just starting out and you want to practice and not pay ten dollars a square foot for colored glass, get window glass until you feel comfortable purchasing some scrap to learn. Because let me tell you, when you go from when you go from window glass or clear eighth inch window pane glass, that is very it's a soft glass and it's very easy to learn how to cut glass on, mm -hmm. and it will build your confidence. However, when you leave that area, that clear area, and go to color, everything changes. So make sure, unless you have an unlimited budget, that you're very comfortable cutting the clear glass before you switch over to cutting colored glass from any manufacturer, not just the easy ones. And ask for one eighth inch clear glass. Uh, I had a, a student that was having problems. She said her glass was so thin. And there is another kind of window glass that they could sell you that's a little bit thinner than and then it has there's the a, inch. And then there's a really thin one that they put in picture frames from overseas. Yeah, so you can't cut them. That. Yeah, so that's not going to work for you. Make sure it's one eighth inch window pane glass. Window pane glass. It's called DSB. Yeah. DSB. That's what you need. Double strength. Double strength, not single strength. Yeah. Single Double strength is only three thirty seconds of an inch thick, and you're going to have problems cutting that. Okay, question. Ray wants to know the purpose of the oil in the cutter. And we don't put oil in our cutter. Not we put, anymore. Put it on the, just a little bit. Yeah, I, I use oil more than anything drops. when I'm in the back cutting thicker glass. However, 
once you're you use oil in your glass cutter while it's new after a month or so of using it mm -hmm. and the oil that you did the two little drops you put in there run out you don't need any more oil what you yeah. need to do is in that month period while it was running out is you needed to learn how to use your glass cutter that's what you had to do because if you put too much pressure on a new glass cutter it does what we call flakes or rooster tails those of you that have a brand new glass cutter, put way too much pressure on it on a piece of glass and see what happens. It will start to rooster tail and flake. And you don't definitely don't want to do that. The oil actually lubricates the wheel, but keeps the glass cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keeps the glass cool. And it is, I mean, it's something that you, if you're, if you're cutting three quarter inch glass, Barb mm -hmm. knows we have a, brush that we have to brush the oil on and we have a special glass cutter that we use to cut that thickness of glass so uh, magali said that she had an accident <laughs> she dropped her one of her pieces so she got to practice repair work you learned a lot didn't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like that's the now worst you know thing. what to charge if someone brings you a broken piece yeah. and says can you fix this if they bring it back you can say think to yourself magali well, yeah, that took quite a bit of time. I it, think that's I'm gonna have to charge you for that. It, it it almost takes as much time, if not more, to fix something than it does to make well, a new one. You're always Sometimes. remember in repairs, you're handling it twice. Yep. You gotta take it apart and put it back. So together. it's twice the work. So sorry, but yeah. It was a silver lining. You learned something. Sure it something was. You new. learned something, sure. <laughs> and any day. That you learned something it was hard. Yeah, is a good day. Yeah, she said it was a pain, but she did it. She did it. Yeah. Um, which cutter do you prefer, Ed? I prefer I the can't. pencil style glass cutter. Uh, I prefer that just because my hands are large and everything else disappears in my hands, and I'm not comfortable with it. I'm. You know, I learned how to cut on a ball cutter, the yeah. Fletcher ball mm -hmm. cutter. And mm -hmm. I kept that in my pocket. Oh, for, yeah, I've used those before. You know, 15 years. And that cutter will cut anything. It'll do anything that you want it to do. Except drive your car and fix you a drink. Okay, we have uh, Kenneth is asking if it, it, he's new. And he wants to know if a Dremel uh, with a diamond tip is good to use for a grinder. For a grinder? You know, I don't, um, I would say not because you don't have any way to cool it. And if you don't have any way to cool the diamonds on your Dremel because of the RPMs is so high, they're going to heat up and just spin right off. And it depends on what you're doing. Yeah. If you're doing lead work and you just need to take a couple burrs off of a piece. Then yeah. 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 Sure. But if you're going to be serious about working, you probably would want to invest yeah. in a grinder. And if you're, if you're doing copper foil work, you're going to need a grinder. Thank you're, you, Ray. Yeah. You're going to need a grinder simply because of the process itself. Okay. And, you know, I've even seen people that etch. I've done etching with Dremels. It's a lot of work. way too much time involved, unless. But if, if your that's time, your thing, if that's your thing, do it. Do it. But I, Barb and I suggest our suggestion: purchase a grinder, please, <laughs> because you're gonna, you're really gonna use it. It's not like you're not gonna use it. Yeah, you're gonna love it when you get it. Just yeah, and you know what? A Dremel tool is gonna produce way too much dust. You can't put the right mask on to to get it out of the air. So. Think about that. Dremels are good for a lot of things, but. Glass is not one of them. Okay. So um, did you tell them which cutter you like? To use? I like the pencil grip. Yeah. We had a question here too. What Magali wants to know, what would you say is the number one mistake new stained glass artists make? You're welcome, Kenneth. You know, <laughs> I think it would probably be not spending enough time learning how to cut your glass before you start a project. 
Too much time at the grinder. Too much time at the grinder. Yeah, that's a big mistake, really. So you can't grind your mistakes away. Mistakes away. I'm sorry. You can't do it. It just so, doesn't happen. So my suggestion would be to number one, and I do this in when we used to teach yes, person to person. We would spend in a weekend course, we would spend half of the first day learning how to cut glass, like four hours of learning how to cut glass. And then I would let them move on to the project. OK. And then again, once we changed from clear glass to colored glass, everything changed and we had to go over different ways of cutting opalescent glass because you know when we say well, pick out your glass for your project oh man they're all in it <laughs> and then they're like why did i get that i can't even cut that <laughs> all well, the pretty stuff all the pretty stuff <laughs> is tough to cut so please spend time learning how to cut glass on five dollar a square foot glass yeah and spend more time than you think you need because i promise you you need it you need to spend time learning the properties of glass so that when you move into a project, you feel very comfortable. So, yeah. And I can't really stress that enough. If you can't, you know, you can teach anybody to put it together, but if you can't cut it, you can't move to the next step. Okay. Sorry, but I'm very passionate about learning how to cut glass. <laughs> he loves to teach. He loves to teach. Okay, so um, that's uh, the a lot of the questions I had. Did you have some more? I mean, I know that some came in several different ways. No. Uh, uh, could you go over where and why to properly put hanging rings on a sun catcher? Yes, please go over that. Magali wants to know where and why. First... Yeah, let him do a little drawing. Hang on for you. a second. Okay. <laughs> That's the easiest way. On a small sun catcher. Okay. All right. Magali, this is a small sun catcher. Okay. It's got a little borders around it. I skipped over a question. We'll get right to you, Kayla. I'm sorry. So uh, where you're going to put your hangers on this particular sun catcher you is right see, here sweetie. and right here. Can you see it? No. No, you can't. You need a, you need a uh, Sharpie. Let me yeah. go get a Sharpie. I'll be right back. Hang on. I have you got one? one? No. I got, I I got a lot of them. The whole idea about hanging things, Magali, is that you don't want to, you want to make sure that your, your pretend wire goes down into the joint because when you're hanging it, you, you don't want it just pulling on the top. You want it pulling on that, that entire piece of solder all the way down in the window. So this, this little thing here, you should be able to see it. Okay, so what I did is I the first thing I did is I, I sandwiched some flowers between two pieces of glass, some dried flowers, and then I put a border around this, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like that and back up. So where you want to hang this Okay, where you want to hang this, you can't you can't hang it on the corner right here because that'll pull apart. What you want to do is hang it you want to hang it right here and right here so that all the weight is on this joint right here. It's hanging on that whole thing. It'll never come apart, y'all. Once you tin this all the way around and you make sure that your wire goes down into that joint, at least at, 
at least a half inch, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be inside the solder joint, so you're never going to see it, but it'll never come apart, okay? Just want to tell you that. It'll never come apart, and your customer will only come back to see you when she's ready for another one, okay? I hope that helps, Magali. And you should do that no matter always where there's joints coming together and that you can hang. And when you hang, it's going to be pulling on everything, not just one thing. It's uh, imperative. Let me see if we're, we're, I missed somebody. Hang on just one second. Let me get back. We'll, we may come back to that, Magali, if you have another question, but let me get this. Um, I had a question uh, from Kayla and she said she remembers uh, you saying that you can use smooth edges of glass to make boxes. What would you use to make the box able to open and close like a hinge? What, what kind of hinge do you use? So we have those, right? Yeah. The hinges are, are, are brass oh, I'll put tubes. That on the links. Okay. There is a, an eighth inch tube and a 16th inch tube. The 16 inch tube fits inside the eighth inch tube. And then there's a specific way that you do apply hinges to your work. And also, you have to design the lid. Okay. You have to design the lid so that the eighth inch part of the hinge isn't just holding on to the edge of the copper foil. You have to have some kind of a joint going back to it. And I'll see if I can draw another picture. Um, and I'll put a link <clears throat> in the description. So what I'm going to do here is going to do a, a leaf right here. And we're going to do a, another leaf right here. All right. So now we have, this is our jewelry box lid. Okay. It has two leaves in it. This is the bottom. This is the bottom. You see where these leaves come in on the bottom? Right there is where my hinges are going. My hinges are going right here. Just like that. And sticking out of my hinges is my 16th of an inch piece that's going right down into the corner of the bottom of the box, okay? The corner of the bottom of the box. I'm going to have to get some more light in here. Okay. I oh, it's getting dark earlier. Yeah, guys. And we have I some... An assistant factory we have some boxes um, that we can make it's it's just we're trying to How's that? the first the first thing we're going to do yeah that's good is we're going to get this glue chip glue chipping off the road here and get it into everyone's hearts and minds so that we can uh teach everybody how to glue Ooh, chip because it's going like to change that. your work that's true hey um barbara's got me really bright yeah it's a little bit scary right One more. That's good. Okay. How's that, guys? Thumbs up on that one? Okay. So, uh, yeah, a, bit, a box video would be good. I mean, if you guys think that that's something you would want, we could probably do that. Um, yeah, we could make a box if it's something. We're going to get the glue chip video out of the way first. Yeah, and, and the then, photography video. And I the photography share with video. you guys some of my little photography things that are very inexpensive. I have a little bag with just my photo stuff in it and uh, it's real easy to carry around and all that. And uh, I'll share that with you in a video coming up. Um, do do we you ever use... ever use the brass ball part of the cutter to tap behind the glass score line to break it? Absolutely. Do not use it on flashed glass though because it'll chip the flash glass. It'll chip the flash glass. I'm like, I'm talking to Bar. No, <laughs> He's talking to the computer. <laughs> it'll, it'll chip the flash glass. But yeah, you can do that to get it started. I do it. A lot of times I'll do it on um, 
textured glasses because they don't always break correctly. But if you can get it started and then run it out, boom, you're good. It, it's a good way to do it. And yes, that's what that ball is there for. That's what the ball is there for, to get your run started, to finish it out. Okay, Kayla, see, she, Kayla says she needs to see a video on how to do the hinge and everything after the glue chips. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Um, well, that's good. We'll be happy. Magali said you were glowing a while ago. About what was I glowing for? For the light. It's still oh. a little bit bright, I think. Okay. Is it okay? It's September. My tans are going. Yes, tans. <laughs> uh, Ray wants to know, it's. Is it okay to use solder with flux in it like you use in electronic soldering? Electronic Absolutely solder? not, Ray. Do do not use that. It's it's specifically for electronics, and it's a specific solder that doesn't conduct electricity. It's made for electronics only. Do please don't use it. It away. It's just a waste of time. It's a waste of time. I mean, you could try it. It's dirty. It's trashy. <laughs> It's for electronics. It's not. Yeah. yeah. So you can try it. Well, I mean, everybody does. Yeah, everybody it's tries it when they, solder they, and they say, not, okay, I can save some money. and Can't do it. Can't do it. Rosin core solder is for electronics only, Ray. That's all about it. Yeah. It's good. So. Um, Just don't want to see you do all that work and know that yeah, it, and it oh not works because it's not going to. So don't yeah. try it. And, well, and you you'll hate yourself. It. Yeah, you can try it if you want. Go ahead, but. I'm just saying it, it's not what it's designed for. It's made specifically for electronics. Ray said, thank you. You're welcome. Everybody sir. said, thanks. Joey said, thanks. Uh, Kayla said, yes, a box video. I'm glad we can help. We're um, going to do the glue chip. And then Kayla. Everybody's excited about the glue chip. You guys will be rocking with that glue chip. Let me tell you, your friends will be like, what? What? <laughs> what? You'll say, well, you have to subscribe to Barb and Ed's channel if you want us to learn how to do it. Or you could just keep it a secret because it's been secret for a long time. Right. And you know what? Um, you guys are bringing out of us things that we've forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things that. We had fun with when, when we first started learning glass. Right. When we learned how to glue chip. It, and it changed, changed. It changed our work. It changed our work. We had more fun with that. And then we. Got away from it, and we, yeah. we haven't done glue chip and, in probably 25 years. And clear glue chip is available like nobody's business because it's made not only in this country, it's actually made in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, uh, but it's also made overseas in China. So you have the Chinese glue chip, which you can buy a 24 by 36 for about $25, but it looks like that kind of glue chip. Yeah. Or you can buy the American glue chip. Made and it's in pretty America. Chips. Made in America, made in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, <laughs> and you can get some pretty glue chip. But now we're teaching you how to make your own colored glue chip because you're right. Nobody stocks it. And if they do, it's pricey. So do it. Only chip what you need, not what they want you to have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you only need a little bit. You only need a border. Chip a border. Chip a border. And chip a border any way you want. I'm going to show you the matting. We're going to we're going to start this project Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Glue chipping part one. It's awesome. I'm excited because I, I haven't too. haven't glue chipped in so long. I just I wish we could do it live, but I don't think we're good enough for that. Mm, we're we're not. <laughs> I'm not. We got a lot to learn. Yeah. We if I had a camera crew, crew well, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind. You know, we're gonna we're gonna show you guys how to sandblast with the equipment that you can purchase easy at home. Yeah. When we in the video, we're gonna be sandblasting in our sandblast cabinet because I don't do it the other way anymore. Okay? Well, we're not set up, but we're, we're gonna we're not, show you how to set up. We're gonna up. show you everything that you need to do that, right? Yeah. And we're gonna be using you guys, we're going to show you the siphon fed method of sandblasting. And we're going to use our cabinet just because it's quicker and uh, much more efficient for us. Yeah. Show you what that and is. And when my hair fills up with sand, it don't ever come out all the way. And it's what? so good when I'm sandblasting. Wear a hat. I will. Okay. But not in my machine. I don't need a hat. 
That's right. Everything's inside. Okay. So you, yeah, and there, you know, there's a lot of different places that you can go to get your glass sandblasted. You can oh, go to yeah, a monument right. company. Mm -hmm. Okay. So be in search of these places. You can go to a monument company. You can go to a place that rebuilds car engines and everything because they have a bead blaster. Okay. Just tell them to turn it down. Turn it down the pressure and sandblast it. Um, you can acid etch it, but you're not going to get the chip you're looking for. You're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of glue and not, it's going to chip, but it's not going to give you what you're looking for. Okay. It's not going to give you that frost on my windshield early in the morning look. And that's what you want. Now you can sandblast if you have a compressor though. If you've got a compressor. Yeah. You can sandblast, use a siphon fed machine, which we're going to show you. And you can use, just go to Lowe's or any of your home stores and get a bag of play sand and you can sandblast your glass. A little $4 bag of sand and some compressed air and you're on your way to chipping glue, glue chipping glass. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have all that together by Wednesday. Yeah. And again, it's only part one. It's yeah, probably it's a four one. part series. It's quite drawn out. That's why I don't think we could do it live for you because oh, that's it's right, going to yeah. take two or three days once we cook the glue it's and put like it on the glass. It's like watching paint dry after we pour yeah, it. <laughs> we're just going to let it. We're just going to let it dry in the back where I'll the humidity is. Eh, 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 eh. And then once it's dry to the touch, we're going to put it outside and then we're going to time lapse the, the shooting of the glue. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Barbara's camera. I can't leave my expensive. camera outside for a long time. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We may get a few. Can you use beach sand? No, I don't know. So. It's got rocks in it. Well, and it's got too much. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Just get play sand. It's very fine. It's a couple bucks, right? Yeah. It's like a little bag. You get a 50 pound bag for $4 or $4, something. Just yeah. use play sand. And That's you won't you use a whole lot of it. No. So The siphon method yeah. is very quick and unobtrusive. And uh, really not that messy, actually. So yeah. So we'll we'll show you with a sandblaster, and then we'll get. Uh, I have got to order that one part to show you that, to do it with just a compressor because I don't have that part. Or do we have that part? We do have that part. Yeah, I okay. have a siphon fed nozzle, so that's. I'm just going to show you that, and okay. you can buy one of those for about twenty five dollars on Amazon, and we'll I'll have the link, the link to it, mm -hmm. and you just stick it in a bag of sand, hook a hook some a compressor to it. Five minutes, you're ready to start cooking glue, baby. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see. This any. is probably a silly question. That's but, it. Okay. Can but, you use beach sand? Oh yeah, no. Well, I know in Myrtle Beach they pay a lot of money to refurbish the sand, and I don't think they'd want you taking it home to use on your blue chip project. <laughs> And it's not really the right kind of sand. It's, it's not the right kind in. of sand. Yeah, well, it's, it's got, it's coarse. It's too coarse. You know, and we were back when, when Barbara and I were doing pottery, uh, we used to use this clay that came out of the ground when we, when we put the water and sewer line in and the sewer was like 15 feet down. So we had the guys dump a dump truck full of this organic clay in the back by the pottery studio. And it had so much organic material in it. It was great. And it, we had to pull like tree pieces out of it. But when we fired it, it turned orange. Remember that bar? Mm -hmm. It had so much organic material in it. And it was, it was this clay was of thousands rocks, of years old. You it, know? Yeah. It's probably what the Indians used. Yeah. Gumbo. It was blue gumbo clay. It was beautiful. I thought it was okay. And But, but when you fired it, it turned orange. Yeah. So. It was crazy. And it was rocky. It had a lot of rocks. In it had it. a lot of so it was hard to material. clean. You had to you had to clean it, and then you could work it. So it was kind of labor intensive to use it. Even but though you it could. was free, it was free. But it was labor intensive. So really, technically, it wasn't free. It cost a lot of money to operate that, right? Uh, Magali says uh, pottery too. Well, our son um, majored in uh, studio arts, and he was a potter for for several years and we shared a studio with him. He operated our glass and pottery studio. And uh, we did that for about five years here yeah. in Conway. Yes. Yeah, we and were, it was our son who was actually the potter. Yeah. And he's a, and he's a very, he's a very good potter. And uh, he used to, uh, 
He actually used to manage the gallery at Clemson University while he was going to school there and picking up on his bachelor's degree in ceramics. So Yeah, really talented. And uh, yeah, so he's all grown up now. Yeah, he is. And we're very proud of him. So in case you're watching tonight, case you're we watching. are proud of you. See you. <laughs> Don't forget to call your mother. <laughs> call me sometime. Yeah, call your mom sometime. And Trisha, if you're watching, hi. I have a daughter. We have a daughter. Yeah, and a hi, son. Trisha. But I doubt they're watching. They're not interested in their watching no. us. We're too old. Well, okay. and you know, they're doing things the right way with their with their family. That's right. So, um, any more questions? Taking care of our grandchildren. Thank you, guys. Any more questions? We might have to leave if we don't have any questions. Okay, we've uh, answered quite a lot I can, tonight. I hope everybody we have answered a lot of questions. And I'd really hope that everyone's health is good and everyone's family is safe. And um, you know, things are yeah, things are kind of looking up. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. We are finally starting on Windows 11 and 12 on the Oak Tree Project, and Barbara's going to be finishing the birds this week for us. Question Ray wants to know Can you use walnut shells to blast like they do in repair shops? You bet you can. Okay. Sure. Sorry, Ray, I missed your question. I'm sorry. So the answer is yes. Yeah. You can. We use um, believe it or not, in our in our sandblaster, we use aluminum oxide. Thanks, my God. So aluminum oxide is a is a metal, and the in a lot of body shops that use walnut shells. They will also use glass beads to sandblast parts. So walnut shells so will be a different sheen? A different. Walnut shells is going to give you a very silky matte finish. Mm -hmm. It's going to be awesome. So that'll make the glue chip look even Nicer. more delicate, I yeah. would think. Mm -hmm. You could do both and see what it looks like. Yeah, you could mask off half of it, do half of it in walnut shells and the other half in um beads or aluminum oxide and then glue chip the whole thing and see what happens because you're going to get a different chip on one side than you are the other or two different pieces right due to the fact the amount of depth that the sand or the walnuts go into the glass you wouldn't think walnuts would be rough but you put enough air pressure behind it and small enough pieces yeah it's going to eat it up but be careful that you don't blow the glass up Usually, I, I run off of about 100 pounds of air in my when I'm using aluminum oxide, and that seems to work pretty good. My, my grit, my aluminum oxide grit is 180, and uh, so I use a 180 grit to sandblast with aluminum oxide. Yep. I have a lot of stuff to remember, don't I? Yeah, you do. You remember everything. You're good. You're good at that. You got a good memory. When for now, <laughs> <laughs> today, today. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Have I missed any questions? If I missed a question, uh, please go ahead and let me know, and I will be happy to jump on here and answer anything, or have Ed answer. Another. Or Barb can answer it. Or you can. Yeah, has, Barbara has as much knowledge of this industry as I do. Uh, Kayla said she made a piece and the copper wire was old. It's coming off in parts, but not all. Is there any way to strip the piece so I can try again? Yeah, just take it apart. Just take it apart. I'll take it off. What'd you do? Copper wire around the outside? Is that what you did, Kayla? I, I she'll answer you. Yeah, she must have. We'll wait for uh, Kayla to answer. If did you put it around the outside edge? Um, it must have been oxidized, copper wire. I, I'm not sure. Uh, Magali bought some glass this week. Uh, thought it was 10 sheets, but it actually was almost 40 sheets. Wow, you scored big time, Magali. Yay. That's awesome. Okay, Kayla said, yes, it's around the outside. Yeah, I would just just take take it all off around the outside. Clean it real good with acetone and get the old glue from the copper foil off of it. Make sure you 
you don't have to tin your wire before you put it back around it, but do clean it really good. Refoil the, the outside edges and then put your wire back around it and it should be fine. It sounds like something was oxidized or something, Kayla. Yeah. And oxidational, man, you that'll make it. you upset. Yeah. I meant copper foil, not wa not wire. She meant she, her copper foil was old. Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't sticking. It wasn't and it sticking. could be your glass wasn't cleaned really good or ground correctly. Yeah. And not I'll trying to tell you how to do your job. But if you're, if you're. But you actually are. <laughs> well, I am kind of. But I'm it's telling okay. you in a nice way, Kayla. Yeah, he is. Sometimes um, in order for your copper foil to stick completely and you don't realize it but there may be some just some sand or grit from the grinder still on the glass where it's ground so i prefer when i grind on my glass to put it in a little tray with alcohol in it and take each piece out and clean it one at a time paper towel paper towel and it's a pain in the neck but, but it's clean but it's clean and i don't ever have any trouble with my foil sticking the other thing is the oil from your hands. The oil from your hands. You, you have to make sure you you only work with the sides of the glass. You can't be touching the the ground part of the glass because that oil from your skin keeps your skin nice and soft, but it doesn't allow your copper foil to stick to the glass. Yeah, people don't realize. They that. don't realize it. If you touch it, I mean, it doesn't take but a second. Like right now, I got oil on my hands. I mean, get my cutter working, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Christy from Fayetteville. Hey, hey Christy. Christy. How's your uh, kiln? <laughs> how's oh. your kiln project? Isn't yeah, that... how's your kiln project, Christy? Uh, what kind of brushes are you using to paint the birds and where do you get them? We get them from um, Sunshine and yes. the, the, the Amazon, Amazon Sunshine, and um, we have a link on our painting videos, Schilling, right? Uh, a link to the the company that makes the paints. They have a set Schilling of, goes to Roche Roche, Roche, Roche yeah. paints, and they have a, a thing of brushes. That's a six pack of brushes, six different sizes. And there are tracing brushes, and that's what we use, are the tracing brushes. Yeah. And we're still in the process of painting, so we'll have some of the... Yeah, it's trying to get... We've got bits and pieces for videos, but we don't have them all together at one time. So we're trying to release one a, well, one keep, a week. Well, y'all keep in mind, we still work 50 hours a week, too. Yeah, this isn't our full-time <laughs> job. As much as we'd love for this to be our full-time job, we also uh, have other things we, we do during the week. Um, do you guys use, uh, Ray wants to know, do you guys use a, a block, a sal ammoniac block? To clean your soldering iron with? You can. I prefer a damp, a damp sponge, not a wet one. I prefer a damp sponge. And that's it. That ammonia block smokes too much for Ed here. I don't do that. I just do use a damp sponge, wipe it off, whoosh, whoosh, Real quick. turn it off. When you're done with it, wipe it, one, two, and turn your wattage controller off and allow your iron to cool. The The ammonia, the solium block, I, you know, it's just not me. I'm sorry. You can use it, but I don't do fumes, and that is definitely something that fumes when, you, when you're cleaning your iron off. It's much easier to use just a damp sponge. Those of you that are interest, interested in the painting on glass, we do with our videos there uh, in the description section of the painting videos. There is a link to the, uh, the section in the SGAA book. Oh, chapter 13. Yeah. Chapter 13. You can buy that chapter 13 on um, Amazon. Yeah, on Amazon. And then the links to all the products are in the description on those videos. Right. So, so they've taken the, the Stained Glass Artists Association of America 
they've, you know, they printed that really nice book. That book is available on our website too, but it's 900 and some odd dollars. However, they've taken like four or five chapters out of the book that are very concerning to everyone yeah. and uh, have printed them out and are for sale. So chapter 13 is all about painting. Chapter 15 is all about reinforcing. There's a whole chapter that you can purchase. It's all about lighting and how to light up your, how to light up your, your windows and how to do it in a way that just knocks your people, your customers soft off. Okay, so Kayla wants to know if we were both stained glass artists before we met or did uh, we find the love for the craft together? Long story short. Long story short, we found it together. <sighs> and uh, I was the only one that was doing glass when we met. But my ancestors were glass workers. But Barbara's ancestors were glass workers. But I never... New, new never knew about we only found all of this out after we had been together for a while yeah so it's a long romantic it's, it's a story. very long romantic <laughs> story it's awesome okay and we'll tell you all about it in our uh what do you call in our it memoirs. In, our, in our memoirs <laughs> okay <laughs> do you use a tip tinner on your solder i do not what is a tip tinner? Yeah, I didn't even know they made one. I have been tinning my own tips forever. Okay. I don't know what that is, but uh, we tin our own tips. <laughs> when it needs it. But you know what? You should, old school. <laughs> you, should never, you should never have your iron hot enough that the tinning comes off of it anyway. No. If you do, you're not using a wattage controller. And if you are, you're using it way too hot. Yeah. Turn that, it down. Your tinning should never come off your tip. So... You need a wattage controller, it sounds like to me, because you shouldn't have to spend time fixing the tip on your solder and iron. Sorry. Okay. So uh, you may need a tip tinner if, if you don't have a wattage controller. If you're not using a wattage controller. But if you use a wattage controller, uh, we don't use one. We never have had to. Okay. Um, no, I don't. I only have to tin my tip maybe once a year at the most. So. Uh, and I use my soldering iron a lot, y'all. A lot. Uh, Daniel wants to know the best way to get the solder to have a nice flow and connection on a lead cane junction. Uh, last week's video. Last week's video will show you that. It's called Touch and Go, David. Touch and Go. Touch and Go. Watch last Daniel. week's video. Daniel. Daniel. I'm sorry. Daniel, thanks for tuning in tonight. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because there's a lot of information here for you and the rest of our viewers. However, last week's video, Wednesday night, was all about soldering and showing you how to make those joints flow. And if you'll do it, the Daniel, the most important part of that entire process is the temperature of your iron. Get it right through scrap lead, Watch the video, and your work's going to change tonight. Okay, Christy has a complicated question. I'm going to ask you, and um, oh, Christy, I have to stand up. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, you got a cramp? Yeah. Uh oh. Had physical therapy today, y'all. My hip's doing fine, by the way. <laughs> What's wrong? I just have a cramp in the back of my leg. That's all. Okay, it's I'm good. Heck, getting old. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Christy. Christy. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. Okay, what baby. are we doing? Yeah, I'm good, okay. baby. Thank you. Uh, Christy has a question on the project she's working on. She's using round AH lead cane around a large round medallion, but everything else around it is copper foiled. The piece of glass is coming out of the lead, goes uphill into the lead cane, but downhill slightly to the next piece of copper foil. Will there be too much stress on the piece when I flip it over? You might need a photo, but. Yeah, I probably need a photo, Chrissy. However, hey, probably not. Did you see last week's video? <laughs> if you saw last week's video, and if you didn't, please go back and check it out. I took a sheet of glass on my work table and showed you how to Flip your window and lay it back down without breaking anything, okay? 
see if that helps. But, you know, if you're using lead and copper foil, thank you, because that's what we want to see. We want to see you mix it up, mix it up, make it yours. Yeah, I, and you should be all right. But if you really um, are worried, send Ed a picture and he can tell you. Yeah, send me a picture. You, you have his email. Yeah. Uh, Karen Mills is here. Hey, Karen. Good to see you. I hope you had a great day. Linda uh, says um, she truly appreciates our knowledge and started teaching herself this past March 2021. She's loving it. And she knows not to use her cutter as a race car. <laughs> I like that because your soldering iron is not a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, Linda. Thanks for watching, Linda. And I, you know what? Thank you for the compliment. We're glad that you and so many of our viewers enjoy what we have to offer. Thanks again, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, Karen Mills said she told her stained glass group about the milk and magnesia trick. What'd they do? They didn't run you out of the room, did they, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, she saw that video. It works. Yeah, it does work. Okay, the next live show, guys, is every Monday night at 7 p.m. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock. And every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., we have a new video. Oh, oh, we did that poll this week. I don't know if everybody got a chance to do that, but we asked the question, what type of video would you like to see? And 60% of you said how to make stained glass. So I think we're on the right track here. 16% said how to start a craft studio and we're we'll have some things well, on there that we have you. a little bit about it right now but again we work 50 hours a week still but we're, we're happy to have you here <laughs> if you have any questions about any of these topics you can ask as please well. please do don't be afraid don't be don't be shy yeah and 16 percent how to photograph your artwork uh, and we're working on that video as we speak and eight percent how to make a blown glass ornament. So we're going to have that soon. That'll be in about a month or so. Mm -hmm. um, and we found out that 75% of you guys are using copper foil, and that is your preferred method, method. of stained glass construction. Our subscribers that answered the poll. So thanks for answering the poll, because without your answers to these questions, we don't know what you need. And we're here to help. And we want to be your go-to channel for stained glass. RDRV Glass Studios. That's us. <laughs> they asked if she was drinking it. I don't know. This day made the evil Karen come out. What? What are we talking about? What, what happened? Gonna... I don't know. Stop in and meet you guys in person. Please okay. do. Yes. Yes, if you guys are in the area, you can you may stop by. We're available for uh, by appointment Tuesday through Friday, and uh, just give us a call. Yeah. Daniel said he started with copper foil, but actually like using came as well. Yeah, yeah I think everybody and starts at copper foil. Well, most it's people a good place to start. Yeah, that they, they teach copper foil off the bat because you've got to learn. You know, I really can't stress that enough. You've got to learn Thanks. how to cut your glass. Copper foil will make you learn how to cut the glass or you're going to have so many gaps and using so much solder that it's not going to be happy for you. So once you learn how to cut the glass, the lead part is easy and it makes, you know, mix the two together and you'll see that your work will change as well. It'll be yeah, a lot different. It, it adds, you can add a lot of. It adds a lot of depth to it. Yeah, and detail. detail. You can add detail with copper foil that you can't add with lead. Right. It because takes away that mass. With the oak tree project, we have four different profiles of lead that we're using. All the way up to three eighths. And that three eighths, y'all, that three eighths looks like another tree part of the tree branch within the tree itself. So it's working out exactly how we had planned for it to work out, right, Barb? Yeah. Okay, uh, Karen uh, said that this day made the evil Karen come out. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm glad I wasn't there to see it. <laughs> um, let's see. Or maybe, I don't know. The maybe evil I, Karen. Maybe, I can't imagine you being evil, Karen. 
Okay. I can't either because with what you do for a living, huh, you got to keep your stuff together. <laughs> on the grinding uh, to keep it from sticking when you need to. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> You're answering that question for her. She wanted to know what the milk of magnesia was. Someone came in late and wanted to know what the milk of magnesia was. It's a lifesaver. Yeah, it will save. Okay. Well, it'll save you a lot of frustration. It will. <laughs> Daniel said the project he's doing is a combination, a diamond pattern with cane and center medallion with copper foil method. Sounds lovely. Sounds lovely. And remember <clears throat> to, depending on its size, Daniel, it should be reinforced because of the diamond pattern. The diamond pattern, believe it or not, is one of the weakest patterns designed. Yeah. As far as being able to reinforce it. And you're always you're either going to have horizontal lines or vertical lines through the diamonds. But the diamond, the diamond pattern designed for a window is by far the weakest design uh, as far as keeping and everything have, in, in check. He may have. Uh, and it depends on your diamonds and how many they are. Yeah, but know. he may have dealt with that problem already with his pattern because you can add borders. <clears throat> you can add borders to your diamond pattern in the right places so that you can then put your rebar in right. and you don't see it in the diamond pattern. So, you, you know, you put those borders in in the right places. and So that your rebar crosses the, not the center of the diamond, but the tip of the diamond. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to cross the center of the diamond. But you know what? Those things with reinforcing mm -hmm. should be decided in the beginning rather than the end. And the fact that reinforcing, as much as some customers prefer not to have it, reinforcing your window has to coincide with the design they have to work together. So as long as you remember that, you'll be in good shape. Karen said a 17-year-old boy yelled at her, got super smart, and was given the old click. Does that mean bye-bye to jail time? <laughs> Too old to be talked down by an idiot. God bless his heart. That wasn't your, it wasn't your teacher, was it, Karen? No, it was a 17-year-old boy. Oh. Yeah. I was just telling Ed today, I'm glad I'm not raising children in this day and age. It has got to be really, really hard. Yeah, Everything God bless that they're raising exposed right to now. is, it's, I don't know how people do it. I don't, I don't know. Oh, you hung up on him. Okay. I thought, I'm sorry. I don't blame you. I, I mm -mm -mm. Uh, don't was, have time he, for that. Did he miss his cheeseburger at McDonald's or something and wanted you to send somebody out to get it for him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you probably get all kinds, Karen, within your realm of yeah. what you do for a yeah. living, hon. And you know what? God bless you. Thank you for what you do. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that appreciate you being there on that phone, huh? So thanks again for what you do. Yes. We appreciate it. Yeah. Hung up on him. Yeah, as you should. You don't need to put up with that crap. That's right. You got a job. That phone could have been on the, another phone could have been ringing. You might have missed something that you had to grab. So you had to grab him by the neck. <laughs> don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Well, thank you, Karen. We look forward to doing this as well. Yeah, we do. We wish we could stay on longer. I think we're people are, oh, how can I find out how much to charge for my work since I'm just starting out? What would you suggest, guys? Ballpark. Um, you can be charging anywhere between, well, I'm not going, I can't really say what. Uh, yeah, yeah. What you have to do, there, there's a formula, Dan, is it Daniel? Uh, for Karen. Uh, let's see. This is Ray. Oh, hey, Ray. Ray, there's a there's really a formula. There's a formula that we came up with 36 years ago. We took we took our overhead, which is our lights, 
our rent, those things, okay? That's our overhead, payroll. And then, and actually you can pull payroll out of there. You need to just see how much money you need to make to survive. If it's a hobby, okay? It's a, if it's a hobby, you sure you don't want to lowball the stained glass shop that's doing it for a living down the street, okay? So you want to, I mean, if he's charging $120 a square foot, you don't want to do it for 60. You know why? Because there's a reason he's charging $120 a square foot. Now, I have friends in Ottawa, Canada that get $450 a square foot. But you've got to remember, when you get a sheet of glass shipped over to Canada from here, you're going to pay two or three hundred dollars for that sheet of glass. So you have to take, you know, your time is worth something. So what you want to look at is your basic bills every month. Whatever what, it takes. what that is. How long does it take you? to build a stained glass window. That particular window that you're How working many on. can you build? How many square feet of windows can, can you, you build? An hour. A year. A year, yeah, a so year. So how many square feet of windows can you build a year? Think about that. And then think about how much you need to make. That would be a good starting point because, I mean, if you are going to make $40,000 a year, right? Right. And you can, how many staying, let's just guess you're going to. Well, let's just say, let's, for instance, let's just, and I'm not going to tell you the exact amount because I'm not going to, but let's just take the Brook Green project or the, the Live Oak project. Okay. There's 12 windows in that project, a little over a hundred square feet. And when we're done installing the job, we will have nine months in it. Okay. Nine months from concept to design to ordering glass to fabrication to installation. Nine months. Okay. So how many square feet can you build a year? Well, let's just say a week. How many square feet of stained glass can you build in a week? How many can you build in a week? I build about, I can cut four or five square feet. Depending on the size of the glass, this oak tree project, I can cut four square feet a day on these windows. So that means this window behind me. How many hours did that total? Total cut? start to finish. This one section, uh -huh. cutting, fabrication, puttying, and polishing, and putting in this window right here mm -hmm. uh, is 16 hours. Okay, so you got 16 hours in that. In one window. Okay. I can just say off the top of my head that um, you need to be making at least $25 an hour. Yeah. Minimum. Okay. Right. But then you've got your... Uh, Build time. $25 an hour is basically what it cost the company to employ cost you. It cost the company $50 an hour to employ me. Mm -hmm. Because you got to pay the rent and the electricity right. and everything else. Uh, I will tell you this, Ray. Back in 1986, we were charging $90 a square foot. Installed. Okay. That, that included design. That included design. It included all the materials. It, our overhead was in there. Everything was in there. And we were charging $90 a square foot. And that at that point, at that time, was a going rate. But there's there's places that are getting two and three hundred dollars a square foot. But and they command that for their work because they're so busy. Yeah. You you really need to figure out how much your overhead is yeah. and start from there. So, um, cause you know, all you can, any, you can build a lot of square footage. All windows are different. One window might take you two weeks. One min window might take you four days. Right. But that square footage price needs to be there. The same one that took you two weeks to build. That was 16 square feet. Let's just say 
you're charging $300 a square foot. That's $4,800 for that window. Is that enough? I don't know how many square feet did I say it was? 16 square feet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, $4,800 for a two foot by eight foot window or a... And that may be a little bit high, but it's not you're, really at, you're asking you me installation what you need to be charging. But uh, what I'm saying to you, I is would say figure between your 100 in the um, United States, I would say, depending on your experience and uh, your overhead, if your overhead's low, you can charge less. If you're paying out the Ying -yang wazoo for rent, for rent your prices are going to be higher. So. Somewhere between one hundred and three hundred dollars should be your a sweet square spot. foot. My, and uh, you know, you won't make any money windows, charging by the piece. I can promise you that. Intricate windows, you're going to uh, charge more. Yeah, intricate so, windows are going to be in the three hundred dollar range, probably, if not more, because they're going to take painted a lot pieces or additional. So, so yeah, this is so. Remember, the, I mean, the oak tree project is over a hundred square feet. Play with the numbers until you feel comfortable with what you're yeah. going to charge. You know, sun catchers are, are selling, some of them sell for $20. Some of them, depending on what they are, some of them sell for $150. You know, uh, frogs and butterflies, things like that, you can command more money for because they're more popular. Uh, Daniel said he has his studio set up outside uh at his cottage, at the church camp, uh, he's at on a picnic table and another table. And people are very interested and excited. Yeah, I know. People love to see craft people work. They do. Yeah. So thank you for sharing yeah, your Daniel. talent with them and, and spreading your love for glass. Yeah. And you know what? When they can see it being made, they can buy it. Okay, Karen uh, says she wants to learn. Uh, I'm sorry, my moving. chair is squeaking a little bit. Uh, Karen says she wants to learn a lamp, a lamp for my daughter, um, irises and dragonflies. You might want to look at what we were talking about earlier is using a projector. Yeah, or but you're going to have to get flat a flat panel, panel lamp. A flat panel lamp, yes. A flat panel lamp, Karen, is going to be the way to start out. Build a lamp, even if you build a small one. For yourself. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. So just a little, a little lamp. Just do a small, a small lamp. Small and, flat uh, panel. They have uh, several lamp books that are available, and um, you can put whatever you want in them. You can put whatever you want in them because with a flat panel lamp, every other panel can have a dragonfly in it, and you can. What you do, Karen is you make the dragonfly like a sun catcher. You fabricate your lamp flat panels, and then you overlay the dragonflies. Yeah, to begin with. It makes it faster, with. and, and, and it, you and get it, your product oh, out. And it gives it depth and character, and, and it takes away a lot of frustration. Yeah. Flat panel lamps are fun to make. And they go quick. They go quick, and it'll come together. And when you, you, know, when you cut your flat panels, they're either six or eight-sided, that's all they are, six or eight sided. So they're either 12 pieces of glass or 16 pieces of glass. And they're very simple. Okay. Flat so, panel lamps. Good projects for everyone that's yeah. just starting out. Flat panel lamps it's are another beautiful. video we have to do. Yeah. I got a lot of video ideas tonight. Yeah, thanks for the ideas. You know, like We're I said, trying to do two a week. Y'all remind we us of things three. that we've forgotten. I'm sorry. <laughs> we might be doing three a week. I know. No wonder I can't sleep at night because I'm thinking of all this. Okay. Cool stuff. Ray's been doing custom lamps for professionals, doctors, and lawyers, custom to their business and their company name. That's cool. Thanks for the details. That gives me a start. Awesome, Ray. Okay. So, and I, and I will tell you, Ray, let me tell you this you charge more for lamps than you do for windows. Just to let you know, you know, back in the day before they started sending all the lamps over here from overseas for a reproduction Tiffany dragonfly lamp with the 1,200 pieces of glass in it, I used to be able to get $2,800 for that lamp. Yeah. 
You used to be able to get $2,800 <laughs> for that lamp. And it had 1,200 pieces of glass in it, and it would take over a week just to cut the glass. And then it would take another week to grind it and foil it. Oh, and then oh, it, Longer than that. Maybe even longer than that. Barbara was helping about a week. But then we had to put it together. And so, yeah, you know, $2,500 for that for that lamp. And I think about it, still Less wasn't enough, enough money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, Ray, if you're doing custom lamps, make sure, don't cut yourself short, uh, no pun intended, but don't cut yourself short. Charge more for your lamps than you do for your panels. He's working for doctors and lawyers, so he he he. He's got the. He's got it. He's got it. Um, Christy says she has many requests for repairs, or uh, or special occasions that keep her busy. But how do you find time to make extra stuff for shows, Christmas, and quantity? Um, that's that's hard to find the time. So you really have to sit down and decide is what is worth your time. So I would say whatever is most profitable to you, right. to your business, is where you need to be spending your time. If making Christmas um, for shows. sun catchers for shows is going to bring you a lot of profit, I would say. Do them 10 at a time. Do a bunch of them at a time. Get 10 at a time when you're doing them. Cut and out 10, foil 10. Find you somebody that you can pay $10 an hour to grind and foil for you. But figure that in your cost. Yeah, figure that in your cost. But if you teach them how to grind and foil correctly, they can do it pretty quick. And don't send them home to do the work because then you can't watch them. Watch them work. Well, if they're good, you don't need to worry. That's right. About if they're it. good, don't worry about it. If they're good, pay them fifteen dollars an hour, and they'll do it right. Okay, pay them by the piece. Pay them piece work. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara's dad always used to say, "Don't pay them by the hour. Make them work." Pay them by the piece. Well, they make more money that yeah. way. Well, they they're do really once they figure it out. They're really good and they're fast. They make you both they money. Make, they make you both money. That's okay. Right. Uh, Magali wants to do a lamp, um, but she wants to do cylinder shapes. Uh, how would you do a mold for that? Um, you wouldn't. Yeah. You, you, what you want to do is do one inch strips, Magali, or half inch strips, or three quarter inch strips. So what you do is you take take the circumference okay let's say if it's if you want to do something that's five inches across you're going to multiply that times 3.15 okay and then you're going to divide that by how many sides that you want so if we take five inches and divide and multiply that by 3.15 it's going to give us like 15 and 5 eighths inches okay and we take that 15 and 5 eighths and we'll, let's divide that by 12. So each one of our strips are going to be an inch and an eighth, inch and three sixteenths diameter. And them together is going to make a cylinder. So you can make the cylinder as large or as narrow as you'd like, Magali, by changing the, def, the distance of your pieces. You can cut half inch strips. It's a very simple multiplication problem. And division and once you do it you'll have your own form that nobody has okay you'll have to demonstrate that in a video oh come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. but as far as putting a design in it my suggestion magali on your cylinder lamp shades or like if you're going to put put them like over candles as a hurricane lamp you can put your design in that lamp, okay? But you got to remember now you're bending it in a circle. But overlays will be much prettier on a lamp that style, okay? Do one and check it out. Put your design in it, which is going to be very difficult because the pieces are so narrow and you're going around in a circle. And to keep you from going around in circles, Magali... <laughs> Just do a round one first with nothing in it and see what it comes out. Do one out of like uh, Lamp Beige or W58D um, and do uh, 16 
three quarter inch wide strips and that should produce you about a six inch circle. So 16, what width? Three quarter. Karen, is that what you were asking? Three quarter inch. Three I mean. quarter inch. So it can't you can't you just use a cylinder as your template and just well you have to you have to do the math on it though because you have to know how wide oh. each one of those pieces is going to be to form that cylinder. Right. Okay. So if you want a six inch cylinder diameter, you multiply it times 3.15. Say that again. Take your, the, the diameter of your cylinder and multiply it by 3.15 to give you their circumference. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. And then divide the circumference by how many sides or how many pieces of glass you want to fill that to make that cylinder. You can have it six pieces. You can have it 12. Just remember when it's. We're just talking about the math, but we'll, if we have any questions, this is the math guy. <laughs> I'm just trying to explain it to you. Okay. That's good. I hope that helps. I like it. I like it. Right. That's a good question. Thanks, Magali. That was a good question. But yeah, you can do that, Magali. And uh, and actually, Magali, you can you can draw that pattern out flat on a piece of paper, put your design in it, and then cut all those pieces and put it all together in a circle if you'd like. Yeah, because you don't have to have it a certain size. Now, if she had to have it a certain size, then the math would be really hard. The math would be in very important. Right. But otherwise, don't worry about the math. Right. Forget the math. All right. Let's see. But I can't. I know. I know. You love the math. Okay. Everybody, a lot of people have to go because, you know, I know. It's they time have to a, eat. a life. Another one. Well, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to us this tonight. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. We appreciate all those questions because you know what? They're good questions. And you gave us an opportunity so that now we have to focus on we're going to try and do some more videos for you. Coming out this week, though, on Wednesday night at eight o'clock is glue chipping part one. And we're going to I think we're going to try and do it in five series. It's going to take a while. What? The glue chip. Oh, I don't know about that. I'll try to get it to you quicker. Uh, well, he's he's in charge of that. So if he says five, then it probably will be five. But we'll get it to you as quick as we can. Yeah, I mean, we will. If It, it may not be five episodes because once we sandblast it, that's one. Putting the frame around mm -hmm. it and cooking the glue is two. Allowing it to chip is three. So it's probably going to be three, three, three series. Okay. Uh, Ray wants an email. He wants to send you some pictures of his uh, lamps, right, Ray? Am I right? Um, send it to Ed. That's ed at conwayglass.com. And um, there you go. There was, I, I feel like I'm missing a question, y'all. Uh, is there somebody that we missed? Because if we did, uh, we apologize, but we'll we'll get to your question. We don't have to leave right this second. Oh, yes, I did miss the question. Uh, Karen. Oh, no, that was uh, Christy. She has an extra large lamp. The crossbar that goes in the top spider. is about it. The spider in the top is eight inches wide. Mm -hmm. The bar is broken, but she hasn't been able to find a replacement. Do you have a source for parts like that? Whitmore Durgan? Um, sunshine? Yeah, probably sunshine, but you really need to make sure you measure it across because it doesn't, it doesn't need to just go across. It needs to go across and bend down at least an inch. So, oh, she said you, it's not a spider. You'll have is to Is it send a harp? Him. Is it a harp? Send us some pictures, hon, and I'll take a look yeah. at it. And we may have a part. We may have one. Yes. Yes. That's the email. It's a physical crossbar. Oh, well, maybe they've made a... Oh, it's a it's a brass... Yeah, they used to put those in the tops of the of the lamps that, ha that had, were bent panels and that had the crowns on them. And that piece of brass is 
just you can just go to the hardware store and get a piece of eighth inch solid brass bar and drill the hole in it that you need. But but make sure you get it long enough so that you can bend it down so that it helps hold that crown together. Also, make sure that you have tension wire soldered all the way around that crown above that piece of brass. Yeah, old lamp. And, and that creaking noise you hear is it's not my husband. <laughs> it's the chair. Yeah, my, my bones don't creak that bad yet. Okay, and um, hobby cane versus liquid lead. When to use? Neither. Neither. Well, know. liquid lead, definitely not anywhere on anything. And what is hobby cane? Hobby cane just goes oh, around the outside, the outside edge. edge. Okay. So but do not use it, liquid lead for anything because it's not liquid lead. And it has no place in your glass studio. I'm sorry. Okay. And Ray, did you have another question? I feel like I've got another question here that I haven't, that I've missed. Oh, any advice on shipping a custom panel? This is Noah and he needs to know. Hey man. All right. So what you want to do is uh, you want to, you can, you can put it in a cardboard box with styrofoam all the way around it so that including the bottom so that the window is in the center of the box in Very, the styrofoam not in a big box yeah but in, yeah inside the styrofoam with styrofoam all the way around it top bottom and sides and then you're going to need to build a wooden crate to put that in just add a half inch plywood don't use anything any thinner because you know why because it's not going to make it wherever you're shipping it to. The other thing is we found that if you put glass in a, you put it in a box and then you put it in another box and ship it. Stained glass windows have to be, have to stay vertical in throughout the shipping process. So you're going to have to palletize your window. You're going to have to put it in a box put it in a crate, palletize it, and strap it to the pallet vertical. And whatever you do, don't write fragile on it because that means let's see how far we can kick it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, a box and a box on a pallet to ship a window and you safest won't have any way. problems. The safest way. Or drive it to your customer's house yourself. And Ray says he likes to do the math too. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. We, Thanks for uh, being. We've almost been on here for two hours tonight. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. All the restaurants are closed and my husband's starving. <laughs> so, hey, well, if you haven't, if you, again, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. We'll have some of this other information on our links on our website. That's a good way to help support the RDRV channel is to go to our website and any tools that you see that we have links to, we don't make a lot of money. You know, it might only be 20 cents, but the fact yeah. that you purchased it off our website says thank you. And the fact that you went to our website tells us that you care. So we appreciate it. Again, don't forget, thumbs up because it's the finger that we like. But Ray has one more question. Sure, Ray, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> what he said, uh, he said, uh, circumference times 3.14. And then what was the last part? Divided by how many panels you want in that circumference. So times 3.14 divided by, if you want 12 sides, 12. Divided by 30, if you want 30 sides, you got it. I hope Karen's got leftovers. I wish. I wish I was that close. Okay. I, know, I wish we could come to the top of the holler. Okay. Magali. She's going to re replay it. And uh, hopefully he said the same thing. I and, did. Okay. I did. And yeah. We're not confused. Okay. It's just that it's, confused. it's, it's the no, multiplication it of the circumference. That's I all know. It is, I know. It's all which coming is diameter back to me, divided. It's the diameter multiplied by 3.14 yeah. gives you their, yeah. their circumference. That's right. Okay, guys. We love you. We love you guys. We're going to have to end the broadcast and, uh, Thank you so much for coming. Don't forget to watch Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Blue night, chipping. Part blue one. chipping. Yay. We'll see y'all Wednesday. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Good night. Thanks for tuning in.